Let's talk about how to use a simple calculator. We'll focus on all these keys in here. And we'll take it slowly to make sure you get it. Every basic calculator has an equals key, a key for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. There are some other keys as well, and we'll explore them. They can be very helpful in certain situations. Let's start out really easily. Let's take three and then add six. We'd find out that equals nine. If we want to clear the calculator and start back at zero, we can hit the C key. The C key will clear the calculator. Now let's start with eight and subtract six. We find out that equals two. Again, let's clear the calculator. Now let's try multiplication. Let's start with seven and multiply by six. We'd find that equals 42. Let's clear the calculator and then play with division. If we take eight and divide by two, we'd find that equals four. So those are the simple keys for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Let's explore some of the other buttons that are on the calculator. Sometimes we don't have whole numbers and we have to deal with decimal places. When we do, we can use this key right here. So for example, if we start with 5.2 and then add six, we find the answer is 11.2. Let's try one more of those. Let's say we had 10.9 and we wanted to multiply by six, we'd find out that equals 65.4. The calculator makes it easy. Let's go ahead and clear the calculator. This button right here will take whatever value we enter and convert it from a positive value to a negative value. So for example, let's say we want to start with eight and then add negative three. We can type in three and then hit the plus minus button to make it negative. Now what we have is eight plus a negative three and we find out that equals five. Let's try that again just to make sure we get it. Let's say, let's clear our calculator first, that we want to multiply nine times negative six. I can type in six and make it negative. Now the answer that the calculator provides me will be nine times negative six, which equals negative 54. Let's go ahead and clear the calculator again. Let's explore these keys right in here. These keys are very helpful when we type in a value by mistake. So for example, let's say I start with eight and I wanna subtract six, but I hit the six twice by mistake. If I hit the backspace key, one of those sixes will be deleted for me and I'm left with what I wanted, eight minus six, which equals two. Let's go ahead and clear the calculator and try that again. If I started with five and I wanted to multiply by eight, but I hit 88, Again, I can hit the backspace key to delete one of those eights and be left with what I wanted, five times eight, which in this case equals 40. Let's clear the calculator. Sometimes you might want to clear an entry altogether, and that's what CE stands for, clear entry. So for example, let's say I start with eight and I wanna subtract five, but I click in 55 by mistake. I can delete that whole thing, that whole 55, by hitting clear entry. Now I can simply type in the value that I wanted, eight minus five, which would equal three. Let's clear the calculator and try that again. Let's say I have 75 and I wanna subtract 25, but by mistake I key in 28. I can clear that entry. So by hitting CE, I will clear the 28, and now I can type in 25. 75 minus 25 equals 50. Let's go ahead and clear the calculator again. Let's explore these keys up in this row. Let's start with this one right here. What this is gonna do is take one and put it over in a fraction, whatever I type in. So for example, if I type in 10, when I hit this key, it'll create a fraction that has one on the top and 10 on the bottom. 1 divided by 10, in this case, equals 0.1. Let's try that again. Let's say I type in 3, and I want to use the 1 over x button. It'll take 1 and divide by 3. 1 divided by 3 equals 0.33, repeating. 
let's clear the calculator and see what this button does. What this is going to do is take whatever value I key in and square it. When a number is squared, it's like multiplying that value times the same value. So for example, if I key in 5 and I hit x squared, it'll be like taking 5 and multiplying by 5. So 5x squared equals 25. Let's try that again. Let's take 6 and square it. You probably know that 6 times 6 equals 36. So when I key in the x square key, the answer that I get is 36. Let's look at this key right here. This is the square root key. Let's clear our calculator. If I want to find the square root of 9, I key in 9 and hit my square root key. And that equals 3. Let's say I want to find the square root of 64. I can type in 64 and hit the square root key. That equals 8. Let's clear our calculator and talk about this last key right here. It's probably the most fun. It's the percent key. You might go to a store and find something that you want to buy that costs $10. But you know there's 7% tax that needs to be added. So in order for you to find out how much you'll need to pay overall, you're going to want to add 7%. And you can see the calculator calculated how much 7% of 10 is. And in this case, it's 70 cents. When I hit equals, it'll take that original price of $10 and add the tax of 70 cents, which would equal total $10.70. Let's clear the calculator and try that again. Let's say you saw something at a store for $10 and you saw a sign that it was on sale and it was 20% off. Now you can click minus 20%. 20% will be computed. It's $2. Now when we hit equals, the calculator will take the original price, $10, and subtract the $2 and find out that you would only need to pay $8. However, remember, there's going to be tax on that $8. So now let's add 7%. 7% of the $8 is 56 cents. So $8 plus 56 cents would equal $8.56. Calculators can be a lot of fun. They just take a little bit of practice. Happy computing.